national security is a key issue in the presidential race. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump joins us now by phone. Mr. Trump, good morning to you. Good morning. You know, uh, often people talk about a president getting that 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. phone call when something tragic has happened either here, either here at home or around the world. So let's go to the hypothetical situation. President Trump gets that 2 a.m. phone call. What would you have done? Well, first of all, you know, this is a subject that is very dear and near to my heart because I've been talking about it certainly much more than anybody else, and it's why I'm probably number one in the polls because of the fact that I say we have to have strong borders. We have to be very vigilant and careful who we allow into our country. Uh, I know Brussels well, and Brussels is a total mess. Brussels is a, and I'm not talking about the attack today, I'm talking about generally speaking, it is a city that used to be one of the finest, one of the most beautiful, and one of the safest cities in the world, and now it's a catastrophic, very dangerous city where the police have very little control. All right, but let and me take you back to I, my question, Mr. Trump. What bad. would you have done first as President of the United States if you got this call? Well, as president, I would I would do probably what I would have been doing for the period of time that I was president. I would be very, very tough on the borders, and I would be not allowing uh, certain people to come into this country without absolute perfect documentation. Uh, we're allowing thousands of people already, Matt, to come into our country. We don't have proper documentation. We don't know where they're coming from. They happen to be in the migration. They happen to come from perhaps Syria, but nobody really knows. I mean, they have no idea of telling because they don't have the documentation. Mr. Trump, which people would you exclude? On what basis? How would you make that determination? Well, I would exclude the people coming in from Syria that don't have documentation coming in from the migration line that interestingly have cell phones in many cases, but you say, how do they get the cell phones and where do they get their bills paid? I would certainly exclude those people from coming in. The assimilation has been a disaster. And you go to Paris and you go to Brussels and you go to other cities, you look at what's happening now with Germany, with Merkel's brilliant move to allow over a million people to pour into Germany. And that's not working. It's, a, it's turning out to be catastrophic. Let actually. me ask so, you this, Mr. Trump. Um, they have in Belgium a guy by the name of Salah Abdeslam in custody right now. He's said to be the man who planned the Paris attacks of November 13th. They have him in custody. What would you say would be appropriate in terms of what they can do to him at this moment to get any information they can about possible further attacks? Well, I would say they should be able to do whatever they have to do. They have to get the information, and I would say they should be able to do whatever they have be to do. Be specific, if you will. That because the laws are so liberal over there, they won't do that. But they should be able to do whatever they have to do to get him to give the information. And the very sad thing is he was being guarded and protected by people that were a few doors away from where he lived. And they were protecting him and they were guarding him. And it was lucky they were able to find him. And he was planning another attack. But they didn't find him because people turned him in. Those people were guarding him and protecting him. That's not supposed to be the way the system works. When you say do whatever they have to do, can you be specific? I mean, what, are, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not looking for breaking news on your show, but frankly, uh, the waterboarding is was up to me. Uh, and if we change the laws and or have the laws, uh, waterboarding would be fine. And if they wanted to, as long as it's with, because, you know, we work within laws. They don't work within laws. They have no laws. We work within laws. Uh, the waterboarding would be fine, and if they could expand the laws, I would do a lot more than waterboarding. You have to get the information from these people, and we have to be smart, and we have to be tough, and we can't be soft and weak, which is what we are right There's now. When I say we, when I say we, I'm talking about other countries also. If you talk to experts who do these interrogations, you often find a division. Some people think that kind of harsh interrogation technique works and will deliver you the information, and others say it doesn't work. You'll get false information. Are you in the camp? that harsh interrogation, let's use the word torture, works in a case like this? Yes, I am. I am in that camp. I don't believe the other people. I am in that camp. Absolutely. They'll give him, they'll read him his rights. Uh, he'll sit there with a good lawyer. The lawyer won't give any, you know, 10 years will go by. By the time it goes by, he won't know anything because the world will, do, will have moved on to an even worse place. No, I am in the camp where you have to get the information and you have to get it rapidly.
Well, let, let's keep in mind, though, draw the distinction here that, that uh, Abdusalam is being held by Belgian law enforcement, not by some military unit or by some intelligence service, like was the case here in this country when the CIA took some of these suspects to secret sites in other countries. He's being held by the Belgian justice system. That's okay. I mean, he's being held by whoever. Let the military take him over. They have to get their act together. Belgium is no longer Belgium. Belgium is not the Belgium that you and I knew, Matt, from 20 years ago, which was one of the most beautiful cities and one of the safest cities in the world. Belgium is a horror show right now, and, you know, terrible things are happening, and people are leaving, and people are afraid. And this all happened because, frankly, there's no assimilation. Uh, they are not assimilating, right. and they are not assimilating in other locations either, I just for have whatever a, reason. Just a couple they of seconds. They want to go by Sharia law. They want Sharia law. They don't want uh, laws that we have. They want Sharia law. And, you know, you say to yourself, at what point, how much of this do you take? And what we're doing is we're allowing thousands and thousands of these people into our country, and we're going to have nothing but problems, as sure as you're sitting there. In just the, the 30 seconds I have left, Mr. Trump, what would you say to the American people on a morning like this? I would say to the American people that we are going to be very strong, we are going to be very vigilant, and we are going to be very tough, and we're not going to allow this to happen to our country. And if it does happen, we're going to find the people that did it, and they're going to suffer greatly. Mr. Trump. Donald Trump, thank you very much for joining okay. us. Thank I want you to mention, very much. Uh, I want to mention we also asked Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton to join us this morning. And she Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.